you know, I'm just going to say it. Raw sucked. Raw tonight from Houston, Texas, June 4, 2018. We're literally two weeks away from Money in the Bank. And this show was a complete abomination. You know, there are going to be people out there that they are going to go on social media and say, Oh, but Steve, you should be positive. Steve, you should look at the bright side. Steve, you should look forward to Money in the Bank. Steven, I thought this show was great. To those people, I say, I hope you get pubic hair the next time you go to fucking Wendy's and your fucking cheeseburgers. I hope, real talk, the next time you get up from your chair, you go to the fucking bathroom, you stub your fucking big toe. Your girlfriend's the fucking man in the relationship, mutt. Anywho. Anywho, mother flowers. What up? It's me. I'm back. Um, I know I'm a fuck I say I'm back, but I really haven't done a video over the weekend or anything like that. A lot of been going on and playing a lot of FIFA online and shit like that. And yeah. Anywho, like I said, Raw for June 4th, 2018. Completely sucked. Two weeks away from money in the bank. And again, they did nothing to get me or you excited for the pay-per-view. Don't tell me that they did. You're lying to yourself. You completely, completely are lying to yourself. And I hate the fact that WWE has to rely on the Go Home Show now to get people excited for the show. And again, I know SmackDown might do a better job. But even if that's still like Raw is your flagship show. You should use your flagship show to get people excited for the next week's show or the pay-per-view coming up. That's how it should be. Hands fucking down. All right? But anywho, the show kicked off with Elias. Talked about last week how he laid out Seth Rollins being that again. Because what happened last week, Elias is now the new number one contender to face Seth Rollins at Money in the Bank for the Intercontinental Championship. He, like I said earlier, mentioned how he laid out Rollins last week with the guitar. But at the same time, it hurt him because... Let's be real about it. Apparently, per Elias, that was his favorite guitar that he smashed Rollins with. And at the end of it all, everybody wants to walk with Elias. And he's playing the song. He's playing the song. At the same time, they're playing a replay about what happened last week when Elias laid out Rollins. When Rollins fell down from the announce table onto the floor. And in the song, he's poking fun at Seth Rollins. At the same time, poking fun at the Houston Rockets. It's the same Houston Rockets who lost to the Golden State Warriors in Game 7 of the NBA Western Conference Finals. How about that James Harden, right? How about that fucking James Harden? And as he's playing this song, out comes Seth Rollins, limping and all. Trying to sell the injuries from last week. I'm going to say this right now. I feel like Seth Rollins right now, hands down, is... The workhorse, the complete workhorse of WWE right now. I think I heard it was either Solomon or JD, one or the other. I could be wrong on it, but someone said that Seth Rollins right now is the modern day Shawn Michaels. I think that's the reach. I get what they're trying to come out with that. I get that. But if you are to. Show somebody who doesn't even watch wrestling how, I guess, a good match could be. Or someone that's, again, that person that, oh my god, is like hitting it out of the park every single week. It's Seth Rollins right now. Seth fucking Rollins. And I'm going to say this right now. I think at Money in the Bank, Elias and Rollins, Elias and Rollins are going to have the best match on the show. Hands fucking down. I think that's probably the show stealer for the fucking pay-per-view. The same Seth Rollins that had the show stealer with the fucking Miz at Backlash. And let's see where this fucking goes. People are saying it should be Rollins being the one to face Lesnar at SummerSlam. We'll see where that goes. I kind of get that, but at the same time, we'll see where that fucking goes. So Rollins comes out. He's selling this injury. Elias in the ring with the fucking guitar. Rollins circles the ring, grabs a steel chair. He gets in the ring. They go to swing, Elias drops the guitar, and Rollins about to lay Elias with the fucking steel chair. Then out comes Jinder Mahal, Jinder my balls, Jerry Curls and all. With Sunil Singh, they literally attack Seth Rollins, a two-on-one attack, Jinder and Elias. Then out comes Roman Reigns, the big dog, the same Roman who was not on Raw last week. And he got a, he got a positive reaction. People were cheering him for a change, which was weird. People were cheering him, right? And from here, we get an improv tag team match from Kurt Angle, who was probably told this by 
fucking uh, Teddy Long. And the match happens for what it is. I thought it was an okay way to kick off the show. Did it really excite me? Not really. It really did not excite me or anything like that. Um, other than there were moments where Sunil Singh got involved and Roman Reigns got, got caught of Sunil Singh. Jinder got involved and tried to attack Roman Reigns at the same time on the outside of the ring. But all of this led to, again, the same steel chair that Rollins brought in. Elias, at the end of it all, hit a DDT where Rollins hit the chair. And then Elias hit the drift away for the 1-2-3. So literally in this whole match, Elias pinned Seth Rollins. So at the same time, it's for the purpose of, hey, we're building up Elias, who's the number one contender. Let him get a win over Seth Rollins. And that's where they're going to go. That's the vibe I get from here. So there you go with that. Um, so, yeah, after this, we find out that later on in the show, we're going to get Nia Jack versus Natalia, Braun Strowman versus Bobby Roode. And we're going to get a seven tag team battle royal for the new number of contenders for Money in the Bank. What a way, what a show, guys. What a fucking show, I, I tell you. Um, we get Kurt Hawkins coming out, talking about how he has been on this crazy losing streak. I think 199, oh, and 199, right? And apparently, he, he said this thing, hey, if he actually wins tonight, if he wins, then free tacos for everybody on him. And literally on the end, like outside the ring, there's like a table with fucking taco shells and uh, lettuce and I guess ground beef, whatever the fuck it is, right? And by the way, on commentary tonight, there was fucking, it was literally Michael Cole, Corey, Corey Graves, and David fucking Otunga. Greasy is all hell, Otunga. How crazy is that? But that's besides the point. That's beyond the, that's beyond the point. That's around the point, motherfucker. That's around the point. I haven't said that shit in a while. Um, so... Out comes a local talent who I guess was in the ring. Apparently, his name, again, they're in Houston, Texas. His name is James Harden. The same James Harden who plays for the Houston Rockets. The same name, right? People were booing for what it was. Um, the match, honestly, was there until out came Baron Corbin. Uh, Baron Corbin comes out, all smiles and all, and literally hits the end of days on James Harden, which caused... The disqualification, so James Harden wins by DQ, right? And Hawkins is all mad and angry about this shit. And all this led to Baron Corbin laying out Hawkins and fucking tossing the table filled with taco shells and meat sauce and cheeses over on fucking Kurt Hawkins. So there you go with that. Uh, again, nothing really exciting there. Uh, we see backstage Ronda Rousey and Natalia preparing for the match. Uh, we go to commercial break and back, and we see Angle and Kurt. We see Barry Corbin inside Kurt Angle's office, and Angle asks him what was all, all that all about. Corbin left saying that he will explain later, but there's something else uh, to say to Angle that he tried to, you know, he he's tired of being looked over, and it says he went directly to WWE headquarters and spoke to Raw Commissioner Stephanie McMahon. And Corbin has a letter from Stephanie for Kurt Angle. And it literally reads, Stephanie says, due to the recent uh, shortcomings on Raw, right? It's She is implementing a new checks and balance system, appointing Corbin as the new constable of Raw. So the letter sees that Angle to, consist, to, for Angle to consider uh, Corbin as her eyes and ears on Raw. The letter was signed to Celia Stephanie. And you can just tell Angle wasn't happy about this shit. And you think about it. I feel like. I even know I look at it too. It's silly. It's corny. Right? Like, okay, Angle needs a fucking assistant. Right? How ironic is that? Right? But Stephanie needs a fucking there for this shit. You know what I mean? Uh, but there you go with that. We'll see how far, how long this will go. I mean, could we see an angle and fucking Baron Corbin match? I doubt it, but we'll see. Uh, we get Nia Jax and Natalya for a one-on-one -on -one match. Ronda Rousey on commentary. Uh, this match, honestly, it was there, whatever. It was Natalya as a competitor who's going to compete at Money in the Bank in two weeks. And Nia, who's the fucking champion, facing Ronda Rousey. Uh, Ronda's talking on commentary for this whole match. The match ends with Nia getting the win after Natalia, I guess, hurt her leg. Something like that. And there was a lot of concern. A lot of concern. Uh, at the end of the match, Nia's like asking Natalia if she's okay. She's okay and shit. 
out comes Rhonda from the announce table, and she tried to console Natalia, and she telling Nia to leave the ring, leave the ring, leave the fuck, just literally yelling at her and shit, right? But you can tell that Nia was, you know, actually concerned over you know the safety of Natalia after the match, right? And later on in the show, you know, you see all of them in the trainer's room, and I guess Natalia. Again, wearing ice and shit, and Nia again trying to apologize for what happened, but again, Ronda just wasn't having it, and Nia telling you know, you know, Ronda, hey, this is what happens every time in the WWE. This happens, you know, we're professionals. It's not ballet or anything like that. All it led to Natalia, you know, walking away on her own. And apparently next week there's gonna be, I guess, a one-on-one confrontation, some shit like that. I don't fucking something like that. I could be wrong on it, but we find out also that I guess Natalia is part of a fatal four-way. So literally at the same time, injuries have been a major part of the show tonight, if you will, which is kind of silly at the same time. But whatever, it is what it is. Um, we also get the announcers hyping up. Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens as the main event for tonight's show. And also, Bobby Lash is going to respond to Sami Zayn. Uh, backstage, we see Bobby Roode with Renee Young. And literally, Renee asks for what his mindset going in to the first, first, his first ever Money in the Bank. And Roode says he's ecstatic, just two weeks away from a life changing match. And once he retrieves. What that what he says? Rude says that he thrives in the spotlight, and that he's excited about climbing the ladder and making history. Says and Rude says that when he becomes a champion, it will be absolutely glorious. And then Renee asks him, like, what about this match tonight with Braun Strowman? And literally, Rude is like, I don't know, whatever. But again, it's just eh, whatever. The match itself, honestly, obviously Braun dominating. There's a moment where Rude tried to get the upper hand, I guess. He set up a la- He worked on the leg, then he grabbed the ladder, tried to put it from, I guess, the apron to like the barricade area. And the idea was to have Braun chase him and shit. And I guess Bobby Roode thought that, hey, Braun was going to hit the ladder. And no, instead, Braun broke the ladder that was literally lying there with his two hands and shit. But all it was led to, again, Braun Strowman beating Bobby Roode with the fucking power slam. I'm sorry, but I am just not buying Bobby Roode right now. I, I think it's a bust right now. I think the faster you turn him heel, the better he'll be. I read reports, apparently. Apparently, I don't know if it's true or not. Take it for what it is. Apparently, Vince McMahon has lost all care in the world for Bobby Roode. Because apparently, Bobby isn't, you know, again, I guess he's not getting the reaction from the crowd that he would expect. Which is kind of big, because you still, you still hear people chanting glorious every single fucking time. You know what I mean? But, yeah, again, I, I, I just don't buy the story. I just don't buy it right now. But whatever, okay? After this, we see we see Owens backstage, and Charlie Caruso asks for his thoughts as he prepares to face Finn Balor. And Owens says that Braun is big, Root has a robe, and the sky is blue. But who cares? Owen doesn't care How about anyone else other than he doesn't care about any other Money Bank competitors. Owen goes and says Balor is a perfect example of why the WWE Universe is clueless as they chant for him. He mocks Balor for his two sweet failures. Uh, Charlie, re- Charlie reminds Owen that he interfered in Balor's match. Owen, again, he interfered in, in Balor's match with Braun Strowman, but he goes on and says it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. All that matters is that he's going to put money in the bank. And he reminds Ballard that what he really is, nothing more than an Irish Smith. And then Owens walks off. Owens is not there, walked off. Um, and after this, we get the the improv, to, not the improv, but we get the tag team battle royal. Right? But before this, we get we get fucking Woken Mad and Bray Wyatt talking, hyping up the, you know, I guess the tag team division, whatever. Just random blabber. Both Bray and Matt talked. And I, I, I'll be real about it too. Like I, I, I kind of like soured on the whole Bray and Matt as a tag team shit. Like, to me, it just like eh. At WrestleMania it was great. It was awesome. All the fuck you want. I try to give it a chance, but now it's like I don't care. I to me when I see even Matt talking his woken language and shit like that in dialect, I just don't give a shit. 
That's sad, because that's supposed to be one of the big things that people wanted, right? When Matt Hardy came to WWE back from Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor and shit, they wanted Matt to be broken or woken, and now they have it, and it's like, now? It's just like, whatever, like, okay, cool. Let me know when you do another fucking Ultimate Deletion or you know, some shit like that, you know what I mean? <laughs> Let me fucking know. Um, We then get the... Tag Team Battle Royal, we get uh, The Revival, Heath Slater and Rhino, Brizongo, Titus Worldwide The B Team, McIntyre And Dolph and The Ascension This match was a fucking train wreck This match sucked uh, There's a moment where Ziggler and McIntyre Got eliminated right out of the gate By Tyler Breeze I hate this notion where Okay, if one member gets eliminated Then the entire team gets eliminated I hate that I really, really do. I think it's stupid. It doesn't fucking make sense. Because you just imagine, like, you're in the ring. You're dumb and is all fuck. You're on a fucking roll, right? And your fucking idiot of a fucking tag team partner gets eliminated. Then you got to go to. How dumb is that? You know? But essentially, the final, I get the final two were the, the B team and Heath Slater and Rhino. And the B team ended up winning. It wasn't like they even like eliminated Slater or Rhino. It was like an unintentional attack, if you will, or a miscommunication. There you go. That's the proper word here. Uh, I guess he Slater bumped into Rhino, and there we go. That was the elimination. So now the B team are now the number one contenders for the Raw Tag Team Titles. They're going to face Matt Hardy or Woken Matt and Bray at Money in the Bank. Again, listen. This is just a just a wave right now for the B team. Apparently now they're still, they got merch over on WWE Shop. Which, by the way, so do we over here at the TML Podcast. We got merch as well, the Flowers. Head over to Teespring. Get your shirt today. Look, we got two shirts up on the store. Designed all by our boy, our homie, Salrex. Head over to teespring.com slash store slash TML Podcast and get your shirt today. The certified mother flower or as well the TML Podcast shirt over at Teespring at our store. And from here, from after this, again, it was one of those things where I just didn't care about the B team winning. I'm just going to say it. Uh, back from the break, we get Bobby Lashley make his way to the ring. He's dressed up in a fucking white blazer, some blue jeans, and all happy and dandy as he could fucking be, right? And it's just him talking about Sami Zayn, uh, about him lately, where... You know, he comes from, they do things differently. Lashley calls Sammy to the ring and come and, and say that he had, literally, again, Lashley calls Sammy to the ring to come and say what he had to say to his face. The music hits and Lashley waits, but there's no sign of Sammy Zayn. Sammy Zayn finally appears in the crowd and says that there's no choice. He's, there's no chance he's getting into the ring because last time they were in the ring, Lashley injured his hand. It literally, same thing was wearing a fucking like his hand wrapped up and shit. Um, just them going back and forth here. Um, uh, and at to some point of this whole thing, uh, apparently Sami Zayn referenced the fact that all the shit that Lash was saying is lie because apparently they referenced the fact that Bobby Lashley on his Instagram account posts fucking quotes. Quotes and shit, how they're all lies, and again, just BS. By the way, Bruce Pritch was in the crowd tonight. Rumors and innuendos. And there's one thing led to another about, oh, how Bobby Lashley, I guess he lied about having sisters. I guess he lied about being in the army. I guess Bobby Lashley lied about serving the country. And you could see Lashley's face just getting mad and angry. You hear the thing about it, and and you know what? I think a lot of people, when Lashley showed up, it was like, okay, he's finally back, great and dandy. But I feel like now what they've been doing with him, it's a fail. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, what the fuck, you know? And I get it, too. You can make the argument and say, oh, you know, it's WWE's way of having Lashley pay, you know, get get payback on Lashley for leaving WWE all those years ago and going to TNA and shit like that. And I guess at the same time, you can even say, oh, it, this is WWE's way of challenging Lashley. Hey, here's a shit angle. Here's a shit segment. Make it the chicken salad. And it's just not going to work. It's not working, you know? 
And I'm pretty sure Sami Zayn will try to get this into a good match. Maybe even Lashley too. But still, I just don't give a shit about this build, this feud. I don't give a shit about it. The same way I didn't give a shit about the angle where they had all the people in drag. Yeah, people were so fucking offended by it, right? Oh, they were all in drag. How, you know, transphobic they are. That I guess none of you mother flowers, you know, I, I want to hear you mother flowers feel the same way the next time you, wa- you watch a fucking Tyler Perry movie. The next time you watch any movie with fucking Martin Lawrence and shit like that. You know what I mean? But still, it's just a corny feud that I have zero interest fucking for. You know, and you can say, you can make the argument, oh, you know, they ruined Lashley. They fucking ruined him and shit. But, eh, again, I don't care. Charlie Caruso is backstage with Jinder Mahal. And Sunil Singh asking uh, what is the heart of this issue with Roman Reigns. Jinder says that J- Roman is jealous, a bitter man. Jinder says Roman sense, senses his superior, superiority, literally, superiority, and is threatened. So literally, again, per Jinder Mahal, Roman Reigns is, again, uh, I guess he's he's threatened by this, I guess the, he's threatened by Jinder Mahal. Jinder goes on and says something is in the air and the winds are shifting and Reigns will soon find, find that the storm is coming. Charlie sent it to Renee Young. I guess, I guess they're doing this whole simulcast type of shit. Where in one area, Renee Young talking to Roman Reigns. In another area of the building, Charlie Cruz talking to Jinder Mahal. And they're both talking back and forth. Talk, back and talking forth. I mean, it gets as creative all the fuck you want. And it's led to them brawling. Brawling back and forth. And it's one of those things where it's like, eh, okay. We get it. You're, you're, you're having a match of money in the bank. We know that already. You know? Even if it's a match that I don't give a shit about. Even it's a match that I know is going to suck, you know, stop trying to force this feud into, on television. That's what I got from it, you know? I, that's what I got from it. We then get um, Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, and, the, and Ember Moon versus the Riot Squad. And in this match, I guess there's something that happened with Alexa Bliss. I guess she hurt her leg. I go back to what I was saying earlier, like, oh my god, everyone was fucking hurt throughout this whole show. Uh, Ron was hurt on his fucking neck. Uh, Natalia hurt her leg, and I guess now Alexa hurt her fucking knee here, and she's walking away. So this literally left Ember Moon and Sasha versus the Riot Squad, right? And the match, literally just the Riot Squad having their way with, again, Ember and Sasha, until out of nowhere, fucking Bailey comes out. Bailey comes out, makes a hot tag, and just has her way with the Riot, with the Riot Squad, and literally pins Liv Morgan for the 1-2-3 after Belly to Bailey. So they win the match, right? They win the fucking match. Keep this in mind. We've seen this shit before in wrestling where someone fills in out of fucking nowhere and shit. But after this backstage, you see, um, I guess, Barry Corbett reminding Angle because he, now he's a constable, right, overall. Oh, that's a, that, that was an illegal thing. It's in the rule book. You just can't play yourself in a match. So therefore, you know, Sasha, Bailey, and Ember Moon did not win the match. And she, he literally told Kurt Angle to go tell them that right now or else he'll tell Stephanie, some shit like that. And Kurt Angle, being the chump that he is, went on to inform Sasha Banks and Bailey and Ember Moon who were talking backstage. And it looked like we're about to get a hug, and seg- or a hug it out, if you will, from Sasha and Bailey. Angle goes up there and informed that the decision was, was turned around. So they didn't win. So there you go with that. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things was like, you know, I get it. It's a way to hype up the the women's money bank ladder match. But even if that, it's like, I just don't care. I, I just don't like, eh, if you will. Uh, we find out that later, that next week, we're going to get a fatal four-way, Mother Flowers. A fucking fatal four-way. Not one, but two fatal four-way, Mother Flowers. We're going to get, literally, from what it looks like, we're getting Natalia, Alexa, Natalia versus Alexa versus Sasha versus fucking Ember Moon. The four women that are involved in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match, right? Also, we're gonna get in the fatal four with the four men that are involved in the in the rock in the men's women in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match here: Balor, Owens, uh, fucking. Uh, Braun Strowman and Bobby Roode. Fatal four way. Another fatal four way. Way to go, motherfucker. Way to fucking go, creative. Seriously. 
we then get Big Show out there with the athletes and the representatives of the Special Olympics representing Texas. Show talks about the 2018 Olympic Games, Special Olympic Games in the U.S. and they will take place next. They'll, they'll take place next month. He introduces CEO Beth Knox. He talks about how he's worked with the Special Olympics and how he's proud to stand with them. Show calls for the fans to stand and give it up for the 2018 Special Olympic uh, game in Team Texas. And after this Finn Balor music plays, they're all going crazy. There's two suites all over the place. And we get Kevin Owens and Finn Balor. And this match, I was it was okay for what it was. You know, nothing crazy until the end where I guess there was a disqualification because apparently Owens didn't stop at the five count. At the same time, after this, you see Owens going for a ladder. He sets it up. He's about to do like a frog splash from the top of the fucking ladder, but he's afraid of heights. Gave literally fit enough time to get up. And I guess from the top of the ladder, hit a coup de gras on Kevin Owens. And then he goes up and grabs the fucking briefcase. Literally the same shit Samoa Joe did on SmackDown last week, grabbing the briefcase and retrieving it and shit like that. Again, this Raw sucked. This Raw was an abomination. I, again, have zero... Like, again, they failed to get me or you excited for Money in the Bank. And we have to rely on the Go Home Show next week for Monday Night Raw to get you excited for Money in the Bank. To, next week, the Go Home Show. And how are they going to excite you? Oh, the four guys that are involved in the fatal in the, in the Men's Money in the Bank ladder match for Raw are going to be in a fatal four-way. The four women that are going to be involved in the women's Money in the Bank ladder match for part of the Raw brand, they'll also be in a fatal four-way. whoop the fucking do mother flower. How excited I am. Holy shit. Then again, I'm looking forward to take over Chicago 2, but we'll see how that goes too. But again, I'm more excited for that show more than anything. Thank you guys for watching this review. I'm going to go to bed now. I have work tomorrow morning. So yeah, I'll be back tomorrow for my SmackDown Live review. Thank you all for watching this video. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button down below. Give this video a big old thumbs up. Share this video with your entire social media. And as always, Mother Flowers, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, Mother Flowers, it's me, it's Steve, it's wrestling and whatever. Mother Flowers, I am out. Peace.